Two Dudes in a Cage are back with another episode UFC 277 Fight Analysis and Predictions. We are your hosts. I am Charles Clark. And I am Matt Johnson. Yes, we got a great night of fights to bring you. This card is absolutely stacked. There's 13 fights. We're going to get right into it just because there's so many. Uh, let's, let's kick it off. All right. The first fight, we have Ryan Koske versus Mike Mathathea, better known as Blood Diamond, apparently, because everything has him as Blood Diamond on there. And it's easy uh, it, to say, too. Yeah. This is his debut with the UFC. So not much to uh, go off of in previous fights like there is with Orion. But I am going to go with Orion on this one. You know, grappling basis. He does have some power. And from what I've seen, it looks like Blood Diamond is going down in weight. Typically fights at middleweight from everything that I've noticed. Now it's at welterweight, so I'm going with the grappling heavy Koski. Nice, nice. Good quick pick. Yeah, Koski, I, I agree. He's a grappler uh, in my notes. Like, he's powerful. He's a wrestler. He likes to grind. Uh, uh, he pressures you forward. Um, he does have a little bit of a chin work. Uh, um, I think kind of like he's known to maybe have a lower fight IQ just because he tried to use his, his strength over technique and give up some positions sometimes. And then Blood Diamond, he, he's only got like three MMA fights, but he has a, like a hundred kickboxing fights. So he has a lot of kickboxing experience. Uh, um, and he's been training at City Kickboxing with Izzy and Volk. Um, this is a classic strike versus grappler. Um, you know, it's really... It's really hard to say. Like this guy has been training at City Kickboxing with with two champions at at a high level. So he, he should have some good MMA experience in with this kickboxing. So, so it, it makes me want to lean towards him. But it, but you always kind of want to go in a striker versus grappler. You always kind of want to go with the grappler. Uh, so I think I'm going to pick Orion with you as well, even though uh, Blood Diamond does have a lot of uh, experience. I just think he's too inexperienced in MMA still. That's my pick. I don't think he's uh, at the level of like Alex Pereira or Izzy. Where... Yeah, even though he trains with them, <laughs> he might yeah. be at level. Yeah, of course. I train with some killers at my gym that are some bad dudes. I'm not on their level, you know. So that makes sense. And next up on the early preems, we got Nikolai Nergomoromov versus Eeyore Patera. I think it's Patera, man. Nikolai, man, he's he's just basically he's a crazy striker. He kind of throws everything looping and wild, but he's really durable to me. Um, he just kind of he'll could just kind of stand and throw him in front of you. He does have some good wrestling too. Um, Eeyore, he's striker. He's powerful. Um, I think he's really accurate as well, but he is hittable. He does kind of have, um, it's because of his stance, he's got a lower hands and he walks forward a lot and it just kind of makes him hittable. Um, I think stylistically, this should be an easy win for Nikolai just because of how Eeyore fights. So I'm going to go with Nikolai. What about you? Well, that's a good pick if you want to be wrong. Uh, I, I've looked at it, you know, I really think Eeyore is gonna squeak by. He is the taller fighter, but he does have a disadvantage in reach by three inches, which is weird because he's three inches taller, but he's, he's a grappler. Like you said, Nikolai is a striker. I think, I think it's going to be a boring grind out for 15 minutes 
where he's just going to shoot for the single leg or the ankle pick and work his way to the ground and just try to maintain control. Now, I'm not saying Nikolai can't catch him with his looping strikes, but I don't see it happening in this fight. So I'm going with Ihor. Hey, good pick. Nothing wrong with that. With the third fight on the early round, have Oscar versus Yi I think this is another short notice fight. Somebody stepping in. Edwards is a replacement. Because the UFC has, yeah, UFC has as uh, Agapova was supposed to fight. Yeah, it's crazy. There's like five <laughs> replacement uh, in this card. It's insane. I'm on this one. I'm going with the short notice fighter. I'm going with Edwards. I just think she's gonna. Yeah, she's going to be the taller fighter, has a little more experience. And we know all the Korean, Chinese, and you know Japanese fighters, they have heart, and some of them have massive power. But I just think it's going to – Edwards is going to stay on the outside, and she's going to do work and outpoint her and get the win. Yeah, for sure. I like, I like it. I definitely agree. <clears throat> I'm going to pick Jocelyn Edwards as well. Uh, Kim, she's a good striker. She can pick you apart at distance. Um, she doesn't scramble well. She gets taken down a lot. And that's kind of the same um, for Jocelyn Edwards. She's a good kickboxer with good variety. She likes to use her kicks. She's very technical. Uh, but she loses when she gets taken to the ground. And I don't think either of these women are going to be worrying about taking it to the ground and it's going to be a striking match and Jocelyn's going to pick her apart at range and I'll and just be more technical and not pointer. So I, you know, I, I would say it's the, I, yeah. Next up, another replacement fight, Adam Fugit with Michael Morales, man. Michael Morales, man, I think this guy is just kind of a killer to me. He's a wrestler. He was a wrestler and a Muay Thai champion, um, where he's from. He has more of a boxing stance. He doesn't really take a Muay Thai stance, though. He takes kind of a boxing stance. Um, he doesn't really do, like, traditional takedowns. He does more of, like, throws and trips to, to get a takedown instead of, like, going for a single or a double leg, something like that. Adam Fugit, um, he's stepping in on a short notice. He's a wrestler. He's a boxer. Um, he bounces back and forth on his feet, and then he just kind of lunges in at two for the takedown. Um, he kind of has a high boxing guard and gets hit a, a lot as well. Um, I think stylistically, this uh, uh, should be a good, good, good matchup for Michael uh, Morales uh, that he should be able to win. Um, Michael. That's a good choice. I mean, you, with the way the Ecuadorian uh, mixed martial arts scene is blown up with, you know, Cheeto and yeah, yeah. Morales, plus he's got a seven inch reach advantage. It's just so much. Yeah. Yeah. The yeah. seven inch reach. Now, I, I tell you a lot, you know, to me, reach is key in fights if you use it right. And I, I think with his experience, he'll use it right. And with his type of fighting, if he keeps it on the ground, he's good at, you know, take down defense. It keeps it striking. Sorry, keeps it off the ground. Cause uh right, right, right. Anytime he gets on the ground, Fugit, he has a little advantage. But I, I'm going with Morales on this one. Yes. KO. We'll see. Yeah, I think he's gonna win. Nice. All right. The next one we have also on the early prelims, is Drakkar Close versus Rafa Garcia. I'm going to go with the cologne here, Drakkar. Yeah. <laughs> uh, let me pull up my sheet. Loading. All right, yeah. Loading. So, Fer uh, Ferreira is actually on a losing streak. His last fight he lost. Drakkar. He's doing good. Right in a high. Yeah, he was doing good. It's a good matchup. They're, you know, 
Dracard doesn't have the reach advantage, but he has the the point, you know, the grappling advantage. Not Brazilian, but wrestling. So I, I think he's gonna it's gonna be a boring early prelim. I really think this one's gonna go 15 full minutes again and it'll start picking up, but I don't know, man. Dracard Dr- won his last think- fight by knockout. Yeah. It's uh, true. Jenkins. But I just right here, right here, it tells me it's gonna be a slow start to a great finish. So right, just because there's so much going on later on, it's just yeah, bound to be dull. You never know. I don't know. I, I think this is a good matchup, though. I think uh, Garcia, he brings it. You know, he comes forward. He's got good boxing. He, he's got good grappling. He, I think Garcia always comes forward. You know, he tries to win. He doesn't just go in there and fight. But Jakar J- close, man. He looked good in the last fight against Jenkins, man. Even though he was out for a while with that injury from getting pushed on the stage. Um, he's a good wrestler. He's a good striker. I mean, uh, I, I, yeah, yeah. I, I both get a weapons fight. Hopefully, it'll be the first exciting fight. It After might be. That, yeah. Close is a, he's a he's fun to watch. I think I think he's kind of known as a guy that's uh, supposedly a up and comer to watch. You know. Yeah, he's got exciting fights. I just think Ferreira's best chance is you know try to submit. So I think it's going to be a lot of grinding and clinch yeah, work so he's not gonna try and break with them so yeah maybe the last round like when he gets him tired but it makes sense smart smart yeah all right next up we have hamdi abdo Lewelab versus don tail maze man don tail maze he's a boxer he's got really good footwork man he throws everything like with 100%. He throws super hard. Uh, he, he's a decent wrestler as well. Hamdi, man, he, he's coming in on short notice. Um, it's his UFC debut. He's an Iranian Olympic wrestler. Um, um, he does have good striking that he's like kind of fallen in love with. Hopefully, he has decent fight IQ and he doesn't gets suckered into a, a striking match with this guy and forgets to use his wrestling. If he fights smart and uses his wrestling, um, you, you, you know, within a good amount of time and, you know, fights a good MMA fight like he should, I, I think Hamdi should win this fight. That's interesting. You know, I was, I'm going to say, I was really excited for Justin Taffa. You know, right. training, training with two of us, uh, with Mark Hunt, very exciting. Dante Mill Amaze. He reminds me of uh, Deontay Wilder. Not very technical, but he has that power and he can make you pay to the last second. Yeah. And I think I think with that, I think Hamdi, I mean, coming from Iran, you know, being Iranian, probably the pressure's different level. I'm not saying it's going to get to him. It is his debut. It's going to be deep, it, though, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I believe it's his first fight on U.S. soil. Yeah. So, Oof. you know, and Dallas is probably not the best place to get your UFC debut. You're welcome. Yeah. Yeah. So, I, I think with that, I think Dante Mill- Mays gets – I think he gets it done. Yeah. And I, yeah. He, he has to – be good on the grappling defense because it's going to be a, a Ben Askren style. I think he's going to come out and go for the takedown and Mays just has to keep it standing. And I think he gets it done, gets that KO. All right. Can Hamdi keep his composure or will he fall into Dante's? Come on. No. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. Next time. No, we will find out Saturday night. All right, this next fight, I'm excited about this one. Drew Dober versus Rafael Alves. Uh, Drew Dober's from Nebraska. Went to Miller Miller North. So 
I'm going with Drew Dover, 100%. Um, he, I know they always say that he is like a wrestler background. He's actually more of a Muay Thai background. He does have good wrestling, but he never like wrestled in high school or anything. He he's one of those guys. He's been doing UFC or MMA since he was 15, 16 years old, doing Muay Thai fights, amateur fights. So he's he's not a top five guy, but five to ten, he's really good. And you know, he lost to Darius keeps it interesting i just think he's gonna use that power in his left hand and he's gonna make a fun fight he's gonna get a finish in the second round and go to sizzler i got drew dober <laughs> yeah yeah i like drew dober man dude yeah i think he, I, I think of him as a striker myself too uh he's powerful and then he likes to brawl dude's like super tough man dude is tough as nails I mean, he's got a good chin. He's super durable, like, dude, in his last fight. Like, dude goes hard, bro. Uh, uh, Rafael Alves, uh, uh, he's moving up in weight. I think he had, like, one of the largest weight misses in UFC history, so they're making him fight at lightweight now. Um, He has not gotten a takedown in the UFC. Uh, um, I, I I think he slows down two um i think dude's got a lot of finishes though he's a finisher he can finish you but he he slows down his cardio is not that great and he can't he's not going to be able to get a takedown on drew dober i think drew dober is just gonna be be more tough than this dude you know drew drew's pressure is just yeah it's unrelenting and he doesn't look like he would be because he looks like a boulder you know right Really, his midsection like really stocky, but he's got power. He's got a great base. Yeah. It'll be a fun one. Yeah, yeah. I, I think Drewber's gonna get it. Yeah. And I, oh no, never mind. Is that? I I was gonna say that takes us to the feature prelim, but I can't. I think so. Yeah. Or yes, think, it is. I I think I can't remember if that was the featured prelim or not. No, I, uh, it's this Moreno versus yep. Sel- yep. Selmsberger. Sweet. Yes. So this is the featured prelim: Alex Moreno versus Matt Smellsberger. Man, man, Moreno. This one's this one's hard, man. Alex Moreno, he's, he's a good, well-rounded fighter, man. He's got grappling. He's got striking. He's on a good run right now. Um, you know, when he shows up to fight, he shows up to fight. You know, uh, Matt Smellsberger, man, dude, he's got super good power. He's a grinder. He's got pressure. Um, his pressure does get him in trouble sometimes, you know, or he goes forward too far and gets hit. Um, but, but, you know, <clears throat> Moreno's kind of had a, a hit or miss career. He's lost quite a few fights. Um, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. He's still a UFC caliber fighter. Uh, I just don't, <clears throat> it's just hard to say, you know, what Moreno are we going to get? Is he going to show up? Is he going to be in good form? Um, he's been on a good run lately. And I think if we, we, we get that, that level of Moreno, um, he can win this fight. Um, um, at, the, at the same time, I think Matt has a chance to win the fight as well. Though. Two great nicknames, by the way. The Great White Alex Moreno and Semi the, Semi the Jedi Matthew Salisburg. So, that is a good name. Great nicknames. Um, I'm going with Salisburger on here. Uh, he's got power. He's actually 100% on his takedowns. Now, could be one takedown, so, but still, 100% is 100%. He, he's more of a striker, though. And he, he's well-rounded, just like Moreno. Less experienced, but also less battle-tested. And I think that's what is going to give him the edge on this one. I think Moreno, you know, he's... He's not coming up like Semmelsberger is. He's 
hit his peak. You know, he's maintaining his level of talent, but he's he's older in the UFC's eyes. For sure. And so I, I think, and we share the same name. I think uh, Matt Sellisberger gets it done. I got to go with against Matt. the win. <laughs> I hear you. That makes sense. All right, so Perez and Pentejo, that one got moved up. Or, did, yeah. So, which is weird that right. uh, that one's maybe they want to kick it off the main card with I, a nail biter. I think they've been trying to do that. Like the Misha Tay fight was the opener. Uh, yeah. Sean, uh, what, you know, the Sean O'Malley. O'Malley was the opener. Yeah, yeah. I think they've been trying to do that. Uh, they have like the exciting opener fight. This is going to be a good one. This, to me, in my eyes, this has a very high chance of being a title eliminator. Winner gets a shot against Yuri. We got Magomed Ankalev versus Anthony Smith. Now, normally, I would say Anthony Smith all day, you know, down the street, Omaha boy. Right. But not being biased, looking at on paper, Magomed Ankalev is just – he's going to get it done. I know, you know, Anthony Smith has had trouble with, like, rackets with takedowns, Glover with takedowns. Yeah, yeah. He has – even though he has 51, 52 fights – his takedown defense for chain wrestling isn't the best. He can stop that single leg, you know, and then against the cage. But when they go for multiple, that's where he runs into issues. And that's what Ankalev is good at, especially in the light heavyweight division. No John Jones, but he's good at uh, the Khabib style of wrestling. And I think he gets it. I think get smith tired and i'm gonna go for a finish i, I think he's gonna get the finish on this one damn it hate to say it because I, I do love anthony smith yeah i like uh, anthony smith too he's my boy man he's on a three fight win streak man he, he he got good hands and kick he's a good grappler but you're right he's always struggles in wrestling he you know he He's got hands and grappling. Just, yeah, yeah. Oh, man, it's crazy. There's so much to MMA. You know, you have to be able to do it all. Yeah. Who's that uh, Dagestani? Because uh, Magomed is Dagestani. And... I think unless he gets a lucky lucky hit uh, uh, in there, yeah, I think he might get smothered. Uh, he might get pushed against the cage, and, and then he's going to be in for a rough night. Um, Anthony Smith does do good off of his back, though, you know? He, so, uh, you know. Those elbows. Yeah, you never know. He could get lucky off of his back as well. So I'm rooting for you, Anthony Smith. Let's go. I want you to win, but I'm not <laughs> predicting it. <laughs> but I'm not going to bet any money on you, bro. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Come on our show. <laughs> Next up, we have Alexander Pantoja versus Alex Perez. Man, this fight has exciting written all over it to me. Um, Alexander Pantoja, man, he's super fun to watch. He's a grappler, but he still has good power at the same time. Um, his strikes are more simple, more ones and twos, but they're effective. Uh, Alex Perez, he's a wrestler. He's got amazing low kicks. He's got solid combinations mixed in with good takedowns, plus 87% takedown defense. He is on a two-year layoff, though, so that does give me a little bit of worry. Man, the only person that's taking him down is Joseph Benavidez. And just for, you know, I, I think – Besides the layoff, that worries me a little bit. I'm going to take Alex Perez to win this. It's interesting. I was going back and forth. I, too, had Perez until I switched to Pentejo. Uh, I think this one, 
I, I see why they put it in the middle because you're going to have a potential exciting fight, you know, with Smith and, and Kalev. Right. And then let the crowd cool off with this one. This one's going to be a technical battle of the lightweights, well, flyweights, but I don't see a finish. It's going to go 15 minutes. Yeah. They're both you know, have significant strike numbers about the same, about four. Right. But <clears throat> I, I just think with Pentejo's grappling defense, he should do enough to point out. It's going to be a very close one. I think he will, he'll win the first and third, but he's going to have a tough time in that second round. Nice. With that, you know, after that no, no, technical, no, no, no. now we have the the big boys, the heavyweights. Right. Derek Lewis versus Sergey Pavlovich. This breaks my heart. I got Derek Lewis on this one. I do. But the question is, when you're looking at his fights, which Derek Lewis are you getting? Are you getting the Derek Lewis that cares? Or are you getting the Derek Lewis that just wants the money? His last fight was not the Derek Lewis that cares. And that's what I'm worried about. Usually he's unstoppable in his hometown of Texas. Or home state of Texas. Right. So I'm going back with Derek Lewis wants to put on a show. He's going to go in there, get the bubble guts, have to get out of there, knock him out. He's going to do the flashy flying knees and kicks. I don't think Sergey is going to try to take him to the ground. And that's why I think Derek Lewis is going to open up. He's not worried about the takedown. You know, with Curtis Blades, he expected it. Just kept throwing that check up a cook till it landed. So I think it's going to be a banger. And the Black Beast is coming for the victory. Nice. For Derek Lewis, man, everybody that knows Derek Lewis knows what he's about, man. He's a heavy hitter, but he's got low output, man. He kind of stalks his opponent and he throws bombs. Um, that That is his uh, best quality and his worst quality at the same time. Um, you know, maybe if he throwed a little bit more volume and mixed in, um, those hard shots would land better, be more effective, et cetera. Um, uh, I, I like your points and you're saying, what Derek Lewis are we going to see? You know, Ser Sergey is a striker. He's a boxer. He's got speed. He's got volume. He's got a good chin to hold up against Derek Lewis. Man, um, he's not afraid to stand and trade either. Um, I think he's going to be faster than Derek Lewis as well. Um, and I think he's not going to be afraid of Derek Lewis and the people who are not afraid of Derek Lewis beat him. Um, I, I, I don't know. I think Derek Lewis, his better days are behind him. And like you said, he, he may well just be in it for the money. He's just collecting paychecks at this point until he retires because it is what it is at this point. Um, you know, yeah, he's, he, he, get, he basically just kind of, he, Obviously, he's a UFC level fighter, but he basically just gets lucky with his strikes to me a lot of the time. He just, I don't know. I hate to say that, but that's just what it seems like to me. He's got that Kembo slice accuracy. Right? Yeah. Like, he's not flashy, he's not technical, but he just gets you at the right, that right button and put you to sleep and to me like yeah it's like that's a good comparison he's like kimbo slice like everybody wants to see him bang and throw down but is he championship caliber cal championship caliber is he a, a mixed martial art elite athlete no and you know i guess i guess we'll know when you see him at weigh-ins if he's a big kind of fat sloppy dude or if he looks good and looks thin down and Look serious and legit. You'll know right away what Derek Lewis you get, basically. Yeah. And I think if he loses this fight, he's going to be in that gatekeeper role. They're going to test him against upcoming That's where prospects. he's already at, basically. Yeah. He's already moving into that position. Yeah. yeah. And I think that 
because the UFC doesn't want to cut him because his name. Right. But also yeah. knows he's not going to contend for the belt. He doesn't take it seriously. But, God, he's fun to watch. Yeah. I just like hearing him in the mic at the end. Exactly. That's what everybody <laughs> does, you know? Yeah. yeah. Right. But. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The co-main event, Brandon Moreno, Kai Kara France. It's a rematch. It's for the interim championship. Man, this fight is going to be bonk man brandon moreno is one tough dude he is non-stop he pushes the pace and he's got a will to win man cod car fronts is a boxer he's got great power he's got great volume his takedown defense is 86 percent man dude i'm excited for this fight if you can't tell um brandon moreno won the first time I think it was a relatively close fight. I think you got to look at the pass each one has had since they fought each other. You know, yeah, Brandon Moreno got a title. Uh, but Kai Car France has gotten so good at defending the takedown and 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 just uh, being so technical in the striking um, and. Uh, I think if he keeps his head together like he has been, Kai Car France should win this fight. He's just he's on a good run. He's he he's just he wants it, man. You can just see it in his eyes, man, that he wants this more than anything else. That's why I think he's gonna win. You know, I will start by saying Kai Car France has a chip on his shoulder. Yeah. They they gave him Cody Garbrandt thinking that they would just let Cody feed and get that title shot. And Kai, I doubted him. I didn't think he, I thought Cody was going to get it done. He, he surprised me, KO'd him. You know, he is a boxer. Moreno is a wrestler. I got Moreno on this one. I just think with his, championship ability or not abilities but experience you, you know the draw the win the loss yeah i kind i thought he he won that last fight i think this is a great matchup i think if moreno has trouble getting car france to the ground car france is gonna he's gonna win i'm not gonna say he's gonna finish him because moreno's got that you know He's got that Mexican boxing style in the UFC. Pushes forward, but he doesn't block. And that's what worries me. Yeah, yeah. He blocks with his face and not his hands. But I'm still going Moreno. Still going. I think it's gonna, he's going to be able to get him down and pressure him. And it's going to be an entertaining. Yeah, yeah. But if he doesn't get him down and he gets hit enough time, he's getting knocked out. There's that chance. Let's Third go. round KO. That's my guy. Let's go, if, Kai. If it's a, if it's a finish, shit. it's not going over three rounds. But I think if uh, it goes past that third round, I think Moreno gets it done. Right. Oh, uh, yeah. Probably. It's uh, like all those Connor, like every time, you know, some predicts Connor, they're like, if it goes past the second round, he probably loses. If it goes past the third round, probably Moreno wins. Those levels. Cardio is looking good before where he would get beat in the past, though Kai Car friends, you know, he would be able to stop the takedown in the first room, but not in the second and the third. Now he's yeah. being able to stop the takedown the whole entire fight. Uh so that could, you know, could make a difference. Oh yeah. If I mean if he can stop the takedown, I think if he's able to do it consistently, like Moreno's going to stop going for it and switch his game plan, and that's going to be Kai Car France's end. Yeah. But now, the main event. Yes. The that battle of the Venezuela Fixin versus the Lioness. The goat or the goat killer. 
<laughs> what is it going to be? We got Juliana Pena versus Amanda Nunez. Yes. This one, for me, is so hard. I didn't pay attention to the Ultimate Fighter. I don't don't really care about, you know, that's a lot for TV. It was cool. Was it? It was all right. Was the trash talk scripted like it seems? Maybe. Uh-huh. You never know. I just, I'm going with Nunez on this. I think she got in her head. Yeah. She needed that loss. It sucks because the 6 1 for women is hard to get. Who knows if Shevchenko should have got that 6 1. But I think Nunez, I think she goes out there. She's, you know, got a chip on her shoulder. She knows she's fighting for. Her, and she's going to stick with her game plan. She lost because she got tired and she needed an out. But I, I don't think that's happened. I think it's going to go five rounds, and I just think Nunez is going to just piece her up. I hope. Nice. Yeah, I, I think you're right, man. I think that what it all boils down to is did she learn her lesson, man? You know, uh, she got tired in the first fight. Yeah, yeah. Uh, she, was, she was looking for a finish, and she went too hard, got tired. Uh, uh, if if you look back at that that fight though, Nunez was she took a two penya the first fight, but she tired the first round in the first fight. Yeah. No, but then she gassed, she gassed. So so what I think is like you know she was the champ, she's the double champ. Uh, she had a kid. Uh, life is good. She's on top. You know. Uh, she probably didn't train as hard as she could have. She thought she was going to go out there and just knock her out. Like she she tried to do in the first round. She thought she had it in the bag. And because she didn't train properly, she got tired. And when she when Julia Pena, who's tough as nails, took took it all in the first round and was still ready to fight after that, like it was nothing, uh, you know, because she ran the miles and whatever. Uh, was able to win. So so did Amanda Nunez get up and run in the morning? Did she do that weightlifting? Or is she still got that champ back to her? You let it go into her head and you know, taking it uh taking the easy life, playing with her kid. She just had a kid, so she's probably not training this hard. Blah, 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 blah. You know, that's how life gets. Um, I and I think I think that's what this did she train. But then at the same time, because of all that, even if she did train, Juliana Pena knows that. And I bet Juliana Pena trained her ass off. And like you said, and and I think she is in her head again for this fight just by watching Tough and, and the season of Tough. She's the, um, I, I, it, could that affect her? Because Juliana Pena is already in her head again before the fight because she she beat her, blah, 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 blah. And, and um, so you never know. You never know. Uh, man, it's crazy. It's crazy. I, I think I, I think it could be. I think it's going to be a great fight because of that. It's yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh. it's it's a lot of a but, lot of people forget to remember that Juliana Pena comes from that gym with Michael Chiesa. Like they have unorthodox styles of training. They have unorthodox styles of you know, uh, like submission attempts, both tough alumni, and they're she's hungry. Like she had a kid, not really, you know, and then came back. Now she has something to prove. Where Nunez, she's proved it. You know, people yeah. were talking about her retiring after beating. Yeah, they're Cyborg. already calling her the goat. Yeah, and I think the question of this fight is. Who wants to prove it more? Does Pena want to prove that it wasn't a fluke? Or does Nunez want to prove that it was a fluke? Yeah. yeah. And I think that's a – it better not end like it, the past two weeks. All the hype and then just uh, – I hope not. I don't think it will. It's so crazy. Yeah. I will say on the record, I, I do think uh, 
Ortega's was via submission. Man, dude. I could be wrong, but it just it looked like he was in a shoulder, like a modified shoulder lock. And I think that's what caused the pressure on the shoulder blade. I mean, of course it did. Uh, just because it didn't directly, an arm bar doesn't directly attack your shoulder doesn't mean something happened and it fucked his shoulder up because of the weight, because of the pressure, because of how they shifted, because of how they rolled or whatever, yeah. you know, like it could have been a million different things because of how he was pulling on it and how they turned and how, when he was pulling on it and yeah. you know, how they, and they could have, whatever. So of course. It and was. A, an Aspinall ACL, that was, I was looking at it today, seven strikes, 15 seconds. That's not typical for heavyweights. That one was going to be a slugfest. I think they were about to bang, it seemed like. I don't know. It's yeah. Like, yeah. It, it, he, t- he took that like step back. They were about back. to draw technical skill out the window and just someone's going to drop and that's yeah. going to be the winner. And I feel like Aspinall would have came out on top. I think Curtis' I play path to victory would have been to use his wrestling and get a ground and pound victory. And I, man, I wish Aspinall would have won, man. I know. I should have pulled. I kind of wanted. Uh oh oh yeah yeah. Uh, I won a bet last week. Yeah, I should have mentioned it earlier in the recording, but I made a little bet just to show you that we out here. I'll put it on the screen now. Uh, you know, it's a little win. You got to go with your gut. Working with little money, he uh, Ludwig Klein was a, a plus 300 underdog, and I'm like, Yeah, that sounds good, I think he's gonna win, and that's that's how you do it, you know. You're not gonna get rich, uh, you, you know, you, you're not gonna win thousands of dollars, but if you play smart and and you figure out what's going on and you use your head, just like Drake did, you know, he bet it, uh, um, but at the same time, he risked a lot of money. Uh, you know, it was a simple parlay. He risked two million, but he won a million and a half. You know, so when you're working with smaller amounts of money, you're still winning a lot. It's still a big win, even though it's not a whole lot of money. Uh, and eventually, those small little things they add up. And I really believe that's the way to bet. You know, when you always try to get those big wins, it always it never works out. It never does. It's crazy. It's okay to bet favorites. Yeah. You don't get that plus 400 victory, you know, like if you bet Anthony Smith straight up. But if you parlay, you know, uh, let's see, Pena is a favorite and Cara France is a favorite. So you parlay those, you might, you know, you bet 100 bucks. Yeah, you might only win 140, but that's still 40 more dollars. Right, right something to think about always keep your parlays to two or three people yep yeah so you get four or five in there that's might look like you're winning 1500 but it's tough getting five right in the mma and it's it's like a known fact that betting companies get all of their money from parlays like it's like literally known that that's where all of their most of their money comes from because, right, because the more you add on, the harder, I mean, it's just, it's mathematical, it's logical that, you know, it makes it harder to win. Yeah. Hey, what do you think of uh, Patty the Batty? Not really, you know, with the mic, he actually said something, you know, emotional. Man, and it's good. That's smart, man. Hey, great I platform. I agree. Like, if you, you yes, know. You do. Man or woman, if you got a problem, talk to someone. Clearly, Someone's yeah. there to listen. Yeah. Especially these times right now. You know? Yeah. 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 It's just, it's hard right now, you know. For sure. So always, always hit up your buddy. That's for yeah. sure. Yeah. Yeah. I think he had a good point. I think more people need to need to kind of do that hopefully he did it for the right reasons too you know i think so i think because it was close to him that close to the fight it was a perfect moment for him 
Right. Now, I'm not saying that, you know, if it happened on a Thursday or a Wednesday and he didn't have a fight coming up, he wouldn't post something about it. But I just think for sure not not the timing was right, but the way that the unfortunate events happened, it was good for him to use this platform for that and not a Ric Flair promo. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's probably 185 right now. I seen this is after eating Bro. pizza. Patty the fatty. Yep. Still a beast yeah. though. Man. Yeah, he's doing good. He's doing good. Yeah. Yes, two dudes in a cage. Man, we was happy to present you this UFC 277 prediction and analysis. We'd like to get you back with some more cards for the numbered USC events. We're getting more people to interview. Man, if you know somebody out there that's in the fight game that wants to be interviewed and on the show, hit us up and let us know. We would love to have you on. Uh, man, it's it's been another great time. Uh, if you like our content, if you like our analysis, you like our interviews, please like and subscribe. 90% of our viewers aren't subscribed to our channel. We'd love for you to subscribe to our channel just so we can, uh, you know, track who's watching us and, and uh, get them points in. Uh, we'd love for you to follow us. So please hit that like and subscribe button. Thanks for tuning in. Thank you. If you have any ideas, post them in the comments. Yeah.